A shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Murka Kodash. My double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS who taught me this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth, risking their lives in these last days to push this truth. It's the brother Yara Yaya Sharala from the GMS Italia camp. And I just wanted to do this quick one, you know, being inspired after watching his brother's um, video. So this is the brother from Nigeria. You know, he's a one-man soldier. He's a one-man army. Let's say, you know, he goes out by himself. You know, he has a beautiful spirit. But as you can see, you know, he seems like he's, um, um, he's not really very well outspoken, you know. But this is the most I hear about Hashem Yahushai has given each different brothers, you know, different lots, you know, some, they are very well outspoken and others not, you know, just like um, Moses. Moses wasn't really one who was really very well outspoken. So the most I gave him Aaron. And I believe if the brother, if the brother keeps praying, you know, the most I hear about Hashem Yahushai might, you know, had another brother to 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 this ministry so he can go out stand up with another brother and teach but the real the main reason why i'm doing this um this lesson is you know you can watch this video you know so this is this channel you can subscribe and watch this video so this is the last outing indeed and he posted a video i believe and it, the brother was actually having some hard time you know with this knuckleheads here yeah, you know those people are really stiff-necked people because that's where i come from i come from nigeria and i know how my people can be really stiff-necked you know what they know is what they know you can you can barely impact the truth to them you can barely teach them something new you know this is really the stiff neck the stiff neck israelites that the bible speaks about you know so you know the brother was trying to you know explain to these people that the name of Jesus is a false name and his true name is Yahweh Shai. But he was really having a very hard time, difficult time, especially with this man in blue, you know. So the man came and he was like, hey, you can call, you can call Jesus, whatever, you know. He even started going, you know, by saying, by bringing out, you know, these traditional names that were called God and Jesus in Nigeria. Like you have the Igbo, the Igbo would say Chineke. Okay, and they say Chineke actually means God. And um, the Yoruba will say um, Olong or Oluwa, you know. They say it means God, you know. And, you know, Yahweh Shai, they would replace his name with um, um, Jesu, you know. In which, this is total madness, you know. This, uh, this, this name was lost, you know. They actually fell off this truth. And once you're trying to teach them, man, they come with this very rebellious stiff-necked spirit man so you can watch the video to understand from the point i'm coming from but i just want to you know do a quick one regarding this issue you know the name is yahweh shai and the name of the father is yahweh okay these names that you have today have been corrupted okay these names were translated from the original language which was hebrew and now they've given you all different kinds of translations. So what you have in your Bible right there are translations. Now, I want to start from the scripture. This is the book of Jeremiah. Because most of you don't really understand what really went down. So if you don't know the history, as our elders and apostles tell us, you know, you can barely understand the mystery. You wouldn't even understand the mystery. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4. It says, and thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. You know, there is also the commandment that tells us that we will worship gods of um, stone and wood. Let me see if I can get that precept out. I think it's in the book of Deuteronomy. Can this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 28. 
and he quotes, and there ye shall serve God. Now let's get one verse before it. So I'll start from the the, the book of um, Deuteronomy 4 27. He quotes, and the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahushai shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the hidden, whither the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahushai shall lead you. Okay? Then check out the next chapter. And there ye shall serve God the work of men's hand, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Okay? And this wood represents the cross that these Christians carry. Jesus is a wooden deity. Okay? Jesus is a deity, is not the, the name of the Son of the Most High. And I will prove to you, the stone represents the stone that the Muslims, they, they worship in, in Mecca. You know, they kiss this stone in, in, in Mecca. Okay? So this is actually the major cause. You know, the major religions uh, is Christianity and Islam, which are false religions. You know, we are not meant to be part of any religion. This is a heritage that was given to us, as you read here. You know, this is the book of um, Jeremiah 17, 4. It says, And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. What's that heritage? The laws, the statues, okay, of who we are. You know, we have these laws and statues that were given to the to the Israelites. You know, the Most High has known only the Israelites and he has not dealt the same way with any other nation, okay? So his laws and statues were given to the Israelites, but we, were, we, 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 we fell short of these things, you know. We started worshipping all different gods and made the Most High angry with us. So we were casted into the hands of our enemies. We were sold into different parts of the countries, different parts of the world, you know. So in Nigeria, I always I even did a lesson. Most people who are in Nigeria, you know, the majority number of the Nigerians are Jakes, man. They are the sons of Israel, the the tribe of Yoruba, the tribe of Igbo, the Benins, and all these other um, ethnic groups that comes out from the Yorubas and the Igbo. You know, they are all from Israel. The land of Nigeria is not their land. That's why they're catching all L. You know, that's why you always have these Hamites who are uh, the Fulanis, okay, the, the Hawusas, most of these people are the real owners of the land of Africa, the so-called Africa right now. You know, that's why you always have them at top positions in politics and in every part of Nigeria. And that's why the, the rest of these tribes that are from Israel, you know, the Yorubas, the Igbos and all that um, smaller ethnic groups that comes under them, you know, they're all catching hells from these people. So these people are really blind. They are really, um, how should I put it, stiff-necked, as the Most High has said. It is really difficult to impact any knowledge in them. What they know is what they believe. Now let's get the book of um. Let's get the book of um, First Corinthians. First Corinthians three, eighteen. 1 Corinthians 3.18 quotes, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Yahweh, for it is written, it taketh the wise in their own craftiness. The wisdom of this world is foolishness. So whatever you think you know is foolishness, you can throw it out of the window. That's why Yahweh Shai told, um, who was it that in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven you need to become a baby you need to become a child you need to be born again and he asked how can i be born again but what it meant was actually you need to cancel all the things that you think you know and become like a child ready to learn again but these people are stiff-necked it is really difficult to teach them okay anyway as i've just you know brought out a few, a few scriptures regarding your heritage that you lost your heritage. First of all, this Bible was translated from Hebrew to the languages that you have available today. And all praises to the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. It did this so we wouldn't have any, any, any excuses. So wherever, whichever part of the world you find yourself, you, you, you have access to a Bible. You have access to read and understand it, you know. But the understanding of the book comes by the spirit, you know. So now let me get 
let me get um the book of um proverb going to read 34 the book of proverbs 34 quotes who has ascended up into heaven or descended who has gathered the wind in his fist who has bound the water in a garment and who has established all the ends of the earth what is his name and what is his son's name if thou can tell you know this name is kept as a secret man and it's it, there is a prophecy that you know towards the end the most High is going to give us this language this ancient language which is called the lashawan kadash man it's the hebrew language the ancient hebrew language the paleo hebrew you might say and you know that is how the most High gave this language to his servants you know starting from the people um from from the elders of great millstone uh, the elders who are before them onto the elders of the great millstone and onto us to this day man so this language is back here and you know we can trace it back to the understanding of the name of the most high yahweh and his son yahweh shai how it was written in ancient hebrew okay now let's get to the book of isaiah 19 and 17. this is the book of isaiah 19 17 and it quotes and the land of judah shall be a terror unto egypt everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the lord of hosts which he had determined against it okay this is the point right here in that day shall five cities in the land of egypt speak the language of canaan and swear to the lord of hosts one shall be called the city of destruction so this land this language of canaan okay remember the land of israel before it became called be, be, became before it came it became um known as israel used to be the land of canaan you know that's the land that the most i promised to the to the sons of of abraham you remember there was a chosen seed which went to isaac and jacob okay so that land has been given to the children of israel taken from the canaanites that were there before the jebusites you can read from, from the book of genesis down to exodus to understand all these things you know so that language of canaan is the old ancient language that we were speaking in israel back then okay so the most high would give us back that language and this egypt that you see represents our lands of captivity but mainly america the united states babylon okay but you know we find ourselves in all different different lands okay in which all these lands whether you like it or not they have something to do with the united states you know so these are lands of our captivity okay now let's get another scripture i don't want to make this lesson really long but I really don't know how the spirit is going to lead isaiah 44 I'm going to read from verse 1 it says yet now O jacob my servants and israel whom i have chosen the most i have chosen israel okay thus said the lord yahweh shem yahushai that made thee and formed thee from the womb which will help thee fear not O jacob my servants and thou jesharon whom i have chosen which is Jerusalem, okay? For I will pour water, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring, and they shall spring up as among the grass as willows by the water courses, okay? This is the point here. One shall say, I am the Lord, Yahweh. By Hashem Yahushai, okay, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord Yah by Hashem Yahushai, and so name himself by the name of Israel. And believe me, I when I came into this truth, I got to know this scripture maybe a little later, but well, it was really deep and spiritual because coming into this truth. 
anyone that comes in comes into this truth you know we give ourselves hebrew names not this fake hebrew name but the ancient hebrew name for, for for my for my own um occasion like for for myself my name is yara ya which means fear of the most high yah bashem yahushai okay yashar allah is my son name and yashar allah means israel which means the prince of the power man this prophecy is powerful because all the apostles and elders everyone has a hebrew name a hebrew name and a hebrew surname man so this is the this is the this is the prophecy that is coming to pass man so this knowledge is being given back to us now i'd like to take you into the book of act 26 um i think it's verse 13 okay now i'm going to get to the point you say this is this is um, an encounter of um the apostle paul before he was called paul his name was saul you know and you know he was he was um persecuting those who followed yahweh shai now watch at midday o king i saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining around me and them which journeyed with me and when we were all falling to the earth i heard this was when he was going to persecute and yahweh shai appeared to him okay so you can go and read from the beginning of the chapter to understand i heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the hebrew tongue saying in the hebrew tongue bear in mind so so why persecutest thou me it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and i said who art thou lord and he said i am yahweh shai whom thou persecutest now this is yahweh shai speaking to paul before he became became paul his name was Saul. you know yahweh shai was speaking to him in the hebrew tongue and here when he asked who art thou he said i am yahweh shai whom thou persecutest so this name is not this jesus that you see here now if i go to the to the two you can see his name you can see his name this is his name in in the greek okay in the greek you know and it and it tells you his name is um jesus jesus okay because even before we got this um this name jesus in the english the letter j was not existing until 1524 okay now i'm going to show you when um this letter j actually came into existence by a man of the name tricino Jan Gianni tricino i believe okay in 1524 so his name this letter j was not existing before then okay so his name cannot be Jesus. His name cannot be Chineke. His name cannot be Jesu. His name cannot be anything other than his real name, Yahweh Shai. Okay? There are many, many points I can actually go into. Many precepts I can go into. But I don't want to go too deep. I want to make this lesson a short lesson. You know? So, you can see this man right here especially the man in the blue you know is really a knucklehead you can you can barely you know instruct him about anything you know he was actually arguing with the brother and telling him that the name jesus is the name given you know and a hey, the name jesus is not the name given okay so um i kept aside the wikipedia which i saved this the letter j okay so this is the letter j you can go read everything by yourself and this is the history you know and it tells you the letter j used to be used as the washed letter i used for the letter i at the end of roman numerals when following another i at the i don't remember i don't this is 22 I think J is a thousand or so, or oh, eh? instead of this, or oh, eh? for the Roman numeral representing 23, it's 22, okay, 23, okay, 
a distinctive usage emerged in middle high germany german okay and he said Gian Giorgio Trissino, born from lived from the 1478 to 1550, was the first to explicitly, explicitly, um, explicitly was the first to explicitly distinguish I and J as representing separate sounds. In his Epistola de, de Trissino della Lettre, okay. Aggiunte nella lingua italiana, Trissino's epistle about the letters recently added in the Italian language of 1524. Originally, originally I and J were different shapes for the letter, okay? Both equally representing I, okay? So you can see this is the history of the letter I, letter J, before it used to be I. As a matter of fact, the scripture that I hold right now is the King James Version of 1611, okay? To be sure, yes, 1611. And in this Bible, you don't have the letter J, okay? You have, you don't even have the letter U. The letter U used to be replaced as V. And in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, you don't have these letters, okay? Now... Let me show you something now if you go if you go to let me see uh, sure one good dash let me see if i can get images okay this is the lashawan kadash as you see this is the paleo hebrew okay this is the original hebrew you can see it right on the top and this is the modern hebrew okay so if you read ha ba ga da ha wa za ka ta ya ka la ma na sa i pa ta za ka ra sha tha there is no u there is no j okay so where do you get this this um where do you get this um this name Jesus from now the name Jesus in the Hebrew was written like this this is the first letter no sorry this is the first letter where is it it looks like a Z yeah is the ya which is this okay this is the first letter of Yahweh Shai okay and the second letter is this it gives you ya ha wa which is um Wa, this is right here looks like a y so you have so you have um where is it again ya okay ha wa okay then you have shy e yahawa shy now let's let me take you let me see if it is written jesus So anyway, um, let me see. Yahweh Shai. In fact, if you write the name Jesus, it has nothing to do with the original name. Yahweh Shai, which means He who saves. Okay. I'm looking. Khan. This is what I need. You see. This is the name of the father, Yahawa, okay, in which you see it's the same letters, but what happens is you have the Shai, okay, added to it, Yahawa Shai, that's the real pronunciation of the name of Yahawa Shai, the son of the Most High, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, so you see, this is it, this is how his name is written in the, in the ancient Hebrew, so, and as you know, the book of Second Timothy chapter, is a second timothy chapter 2 let's try to get into it quickly this is second timothy 2 this is 16 or 15 let's see 
can. This is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. It says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. Uh, now, let me, let me go back to the real King James Version. That's what I need here. It say, study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that's what we're doing. We're not just gogging down everything they tell us in church, man. We are actually seeking these words, dividing these words, okay? And this is how his name is written originally. So if you go back to the ancient Hebrew and you see these letters, you know it is pronounced Yahawah Shai. Yahawah Shai. Okay, that's how it's pronounced. Now, one more thing that I would like to bring out, in which the brother actually quoted. Okay, the brother actually quoted to this man, but this man wasn't listening. He might have had, he might have taken something really important back home, but he wasn't listening. So that's why you're giving two ears and one mouth. Two ears and one mouth. So you listen more and speak less. So this man right here is trying to, you know, prove that he knows, that he knows. So he, he, someone like this can't take anything home, man. This is the book of Revelation one i'll read from that anyway let me just show you so you can see from the first verse it tells you the revelation of yahweh shia mashiach which yahweh gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servants um john okay Who bear record of the word of Yahweh and of the testimony of Yahweh Shai of all things that he saw. Okay. So as you see, it goes on. I'd like to read this word. It say, Blessed is he that read it and they that hear the word of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So blessed are those who read the word of the prophecies that are written in this book, not according to how your pastor tells you not according to how religion tells you but according to how it's written in the book it says and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot and got about the pap paps with a golden garden and this is yahweh shai is speaking to, is speaking about he who the world ignorantly calls jesus you see this is revelation 1 14 it says his head and his hair were like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as flame of fire. Now, let's check what, what it means by having a woolly hair. As he said, hair as white as snow. Okay, now if you write woolly hair, the only people that have that such hair are the so called Negroes. Woolly hair. Let me put woolly white hair. So you see, this is what it looks like, man. You can see this man. This is what woolly hair looks like. This is what hair, woolly hair looks like. Looks kinky, okay? This is a perfect example. This is woolly hair. Okay, and it is white. So Yahweh Shai had had a look that is similar to what I just showed you. Okay, let's keep reading. Where is it? I think I lost. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I don't really... I don't me I don't know how this left did I cancel it did I close it up anyway going back to the book of Revelation Revelation 1 so I already showed you what it means by having woolly hair so now let's read verse 15 it says and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned 
in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. Take note, his feet like unto fine brass. That's the color of his feet in which if his feet is brown as brass, the rest of his body would have the same color. Okay, now let's see. This is the color of brass anyway, the color you see, burned brass. It's going to look a little darker than this. Now let's see. Bond brass. Because bear in mind, as you can see, this is the color of bond brass. These are the Negroes can. This is the image you should get. This is the image you should get, you know. White woolly hair and bond brass. This is the revelation. His head and his hair were white like wool and as white as snow. And his eyes were as the flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. You have other precepts that let you know that the so-called Israelites are the so-called... The Israelites are the so-called Negroes, Native Americans and the Latinos. Okay? My skin is black. That's Job 30, 30. Lamentation. Our skin was black like an oven. Okay? So you see, Yahweh Shai, is, whose, whose name is Yahweh Shai, is a black man, is a cold, so called Negro. Okay, now let's take this picture Cesare, Cesare Borgia. This is the guy they actually put his face as Jesus. Okay, so you see that you're worshipping a different entity. Okay, as you can see. They give you the image of Cesare was taken as Jesus. So you can see you're worshipping a different deity. Now, if you go, if you go look at the history of this Cesare Borgia, which I dare you to go look at the history of this guy. This is one hell of a devil, man. This dude killed his brother. He slept with his sister, killed multiple people is the second son um is the second son i believe of the sixth pole pope okay so this are this is when actually the devils got into power they changed the image of the son of the most high now i believe you can find that in the book of first maccabees laid open the book of the law now you find this story in the book of Maccabees that was taken away from the Bible in which if you have the old Bible, which is the old, um, the first King James version, which is the 1611 edition, you're definitely going, you're going to find this book in it. This is the first Maccabees chapter three, verse 48 says, and laid open the book of the law, wherein the hidden had sought to paint the likeness of their image. So we know that is slave masters that came to take your father's slaves okay that are actually still enslaving you today with all different kinds of um of um what do you call it um what's the word i'm looking for okay let me just put it like with the democracy what they do you think they're going to give you the true name of your savior no they took that name away and they brought jesus to you so this is for those in Nigeria, most especially because I am from that part of the world, okay? And I know how these people think, man. They're really so um, stiff-necked, man. Stiff-necked people. You need to wake up from these crazy and mad philosophies, which is going to lead only to death, you know? These people, the funny thing is they have a great zeal to worship the Most High, but they have this zeal not according to knowledge, just like, you know, this book says, um, I think it's the book of Romans, if I'm not mistaken. Can. This is the book of Romans 10 2. He says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And now, when they see someone that is trying to impart this knowledge to them, they stiffen their neck more. It's the time is really short, you know. Things are really about to go crazy. The son of the most high Yahaba Shemi Shai is returning. And when he returns, many majority are going to be 
they are going to be shocked man with what they see the so-called black man and it's not a white man like they believe his name is not jesus his name is yahweh shai having said this i hope this lesson was edifying i'd like to give all praises to the most high yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem Urka kodash my double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone gms who taught me this truth which is the 100 percent truth peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth shalom